Retina Rounds episode number 32, Twist and Out IOL Removal. In this case, we'll show you how to remove a single piece IOL without the use of scissors. And we want to thank Dr. Thada Tantisararsart from Thailand for contributing this case. This is going to be a technique that's familiar to the Cataract Coach viewers, as this technique was first described by Drs. Pandit, Devgan, and Chapman back in 2020. Here we'll go ahead and run through the case at full speed, and then we'll show it at half speed so that we can break down each step in more detail. So the surgeon here is starting by creating a clear corneal incision. You can see that that wound is being enlarged. Using a forceps, the dislocated intraocular lens haptic is being externalized through that clear corneal wound uh, to hold the lens in place. Uh, this looks like a 23 gauge vitrectomy and so an anterior vitrectomy is being performed here. Uh, that's intended to disentangle uh, the vitreous from uh, the lens itself before it's externalized and removed. Now a McPherson forcep is being introduced and um, through the side port a spatula is being used to protect the endothelium. Using the McPherson forcep the lens is then rotated so that it's, it's folded in half and then pulled out through that clear corneal wound. Uh, some viscoelastic is put in the anterior chamber uh, to, uh, to reposition the iris that's prolapsed out through that clear corneal wound and now the vitrectomy can be continued. This vitrectomy is being performed for a patient who has a history of CMV retinitis. All right, now going at half speed, uh, a clear corneal wound is being created. Uh, this, uh, this technique has been described in small uh, corneal incisions up to 2.2 millimeters, but we're gonna be sewing this wound shut uh, given the vitrectomy, and so uh, making a larger incision can make it easier to externalize the lens. Now some dispersive viscoelastic is being uh, put in and that's important to protect the corneal endothelium during this process. And that haptic is being externalized through the clear corneal wound to hold it in place while the anterior vitrectomy is being performed. It's important to perform at least an anterior vitrectomy at this stage uh, to ensure that any vitreous that may be entangled uh, in the lens uh, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't prolapse through the corneal wound as that lens is being removed. That's going to help to decrease any traction on the retina and the vitreous base in particular, uh, decreasing the risk for um, a peripheral retinal break. Now using a McPherson forceps, and it's important here to use uh, a small dimension uh, forceps because that's gonna take up some space in the corneal wound. Uh, using the McPherson forceps, that lens is being held and then a spatula is being used to protect the endothelium. That's not only gonna protect the endothelium, but that's also going to be the surface upon which this lens is, is uh, folded. So the forcep is then turned uh, and uh, the lens is folded in half and then externalized through that clear corneal wound. So here are your take home points. Vitroretinal surgeons often have to deal with dislocated lenses and removing the dislocated lens is a process uh, that a vitroretinal surgeon should be comfortable doing uh, to minimize any trauma to the anterior segment uh, that may compromise the view not only during the surgery uh, but also in the post-operative period. In this particular case, we've shown you a technique called the twist and out IOL removal technique that doesn't require any special lens cutting scissors or lens grasping forceps other than the McPherson forcep and a spatula which was used to fold the lens. And that's advantageous because sometimes those special instruments are unavailable to the surgeon. A couple of important points regarding this technique, you'll notice if you look back at the video that the lens is being held at the edge closer to uh, where the externalized haptic is. You don't want to hold the lens in the middle um, so that you have uh, plenty of uh, room to twist up that, uh, that lens into a smaller dimension. The other is that you want to start uh, your hand position in the supinated position, so your palm up uh, towards the ceiling, and then as you're twisting, you're going to pronate, so turn that palm down uh, towards the floor, uh, and that'll uh, fold that lens up uh, to a sufficiently small size to externalize through this clear corneal wound. Now when an IOL is being uh, removed at the same time as a parts plane of vitrectomy, regardless of the size of the clear corneal wound, I recommend uh, closing that wound with a 10 nylon suture uh, just to make sure that it's watertight. There can be some, um, some manipulation of the globe, uh, especially with uh, peripheral scleral depression, and you don't want uh, any of the, those pressure dynamics causing the uh, corneal wound to open. So that means you can use a, a larger wound in these cases and that can make it a little bit easier uh, to uh, remove this lens uh, using this technique. It doesn't require the, um, the lens to be twisted uh, too much. It just has to be twisted effectively in half or a little bit more than half to externalize through the, uh, through the clear corneal wound. And you saw in this case that Dr. Tanti Sararsart enlarged his corneal wound uh, to make this process a little bit easier. I think the, uh, the most important part of this entire procedure is to make sure that the endothelium is protected. 
Uh, that's the reason for using a spatula coming across uh, the uh, the surface of the lens to uh, prevent it from uh, to prevent that lens as it's being rolled up from touching the corneal endothelium. And you also want to make sure that you're using dispersive viscoelastic here. Uh, to protect, protect the endothelium. We're going to show you additional uh, techniques for uh, intraocular lens removal in upcoming episodes, but I thought we'd start with this one. It's a very elegant technique and again doesn't require any special instrumentation uh, for lens removal. And again I want to thank Dr. Tantis Harasart for contributing this case. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.